Hello, my name is Mr. Veach here at Johnson City Schools, where we're joining forces with the Copernic Space Education Center to bring you exciting science information and activities. The Copernic Space Education Center in Vestal, New York, functions as a regional center for earth science, astronomy, and physical science studies. The site includes four science labs, a nature area, three major observatories with professional telescopes. All programs involve students in the science inquiry process and help students think and work as scientists. Emphasis is placed on skills in measurement, journaling, observation, prediction, experimentation, use of science tools, and formulating questions. The Copernic Space Education Center includes a science gift shop with indoor and outdoor eating areas. And now, here from the Copernic with our newest science experiment is Mr. Roy Williams. Hello, have you ever wondered what a comet is? Is it hot or is it cold? Well, today we're going to make a comet. A few years ago, we took this picture at C Copernic Observatory of Comet Hale-Bopp. Hale-Bopp was a spectacular comet that was very bright. You can see that Comet Hale-Bopp has two different tails. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, we're going to make what is at the center of the comet. Surrounding this center is something called a coma. And that is the atmosphere of the comet. And inside that coma is what's called the nucleus. And that's what we're going to make today. The nucleus of a comet is made out of stuff that is so cold, I have to wear gloves. In fact, it is a, a minus 110 degrees below zero. So if I were to touch this, I would instantly get frostbite. And here it goes. Uh, you might have seen this stuff before. It's called dry ice. Yes, very, very cold, 110 degrees below z zero. Now, that's the main thing a comet is made out of, and it's also made out of water, which, of course, is going to be water ice. And it also has a little bit, but not as much, ammonia the stuff you clean your floors with. Comets also have some rocky material in, this, in them. And here's our rocky material. Today we're using colored rocks here. And finally, comets also have organic materials, simple compounds that are the building blocks of life. In fact, some people theorize that comets might have brought early building blocks of life to the Earth. All right, we're ready to make our comet. Here we go. We need a little bit more water. And here we go. And, ta-da, here is our comet. And as you can see, there's lighter, lighter areas and darker areas. In fact, when we took pictures of, of Halley's Comet with some spacecrafts, we did see that. And it is these lighter areas where you're going to get the tail from. Most of the time, comets are really far away from the solar system, from, from the sun. They're so far away from the sun that they don't uh, get any energy. But as they get closer to the sun, they start heating up. And that is when you get a tail. So a tail starts to form. And Comet Hale-Bopp's case, that tail was 100 million miles long. However, the size of the nucleus in most comets are generally only 1, 3, maybe 10 miles across. Hale-Bopp was a real big one. It was about 40 miles across. It was the largest comet we've ever seen. So just to recap the different parts of a comet, we have in the center of the comet is the nucleus and the coma right here. And then we have the two different tails. Now this bluish tail right here is called the ion tail. And it is actually glowing. It is gas that is, that is electrified by the sun's energy, and it's actually giving off light. The other tail is called a dust tail. And you might have noticed is that comet I just made is actually very fragile. And comets, debris come off it. And that debris gets left behind, and it reflects sunlight. So what you're seeing here is the path of the comet. 
and that's called a dust tail. Well, there, there you go, folks. That's what a comet is. They're very cold, old objects of the solar system, and you can come up to Copernic sometime and look through our telescopes, and hopefully one day we'll get a comet even better than Hale-Bopp. Thank you.